Welcome to the ninth annual THR Awards show, the most prestigious award show on the internet. It is shocking to think that 2023 is almost over. This year just went by so fast. But what we do on these award shows every year is we reflect back on the year. We look at some highlights, some lowlights, and ultimately we vote on which ones were the most significant. Now, the way that it works is I make four nominations in each category, and I put it up to a vote on Twitter, YouTube, and Patreon. So without further ado, let's get to it because this year we're changing it up a little bit we're doing all of the awards in one video because i don't think it's nice for me to bombard your feed with like four or five videos when you could just get all the results in one video so the first category is the badass moment of 2023 now there were a lot of things to consider even though the year overall i think was bad there were some highlights here are my nominations Tucker Carlson getting fired from Fox News. Also, he was sent to cease and desist. On top of that, uh, just happened a couple of weeks ago. Henry Kissinger died. If that's not a highlight of the year, nothing is. And there's also the ceasefire now protests and Michaela Kavanaugh's filibuster of a gender affirming care ban. Now, before we get to the results here, I want to give you some honorable mentions. Bethany Mandel ah. humiliated herself while trying to describe Woke on Rising after she wrote a book about Woke. Mr. Beast defended his trans friend. Orcas decided to start destroying rich people's yachts. Kevin McCarthy was ousted. And a GOP book ban in Utah led to the Bible being banned as well, which uh, was really, really nice to see now we also had an incredible year when it comes to labor the uaw strikes the writers and actors strikes all honorable mentions if not the most badass moments arguably alone but when it comes to the results you all chose tucker carlson getting fired with henry kissinger dying as the runner-up now, the next category is the WTF moment of 2023. This is an overly broad category that usually contains things that are disturbing, sometimes just really silly and shocking, and also sometimes things that are really dreadful. Last year, Roe v. Wade getting overturned, for example, was the biggest WTF moment. But I think that this year, given all of the terrible things that have happened, this category needs reform, and I'll explain that in a moment. So the nominations are the East Palestine train derailment, Trump's multiple indictments, the transphobic Bud Light meltdown, and of course, the Gaza genocide. Um, and now, obviously, that is by far and away the biggest WTF moment for all of you, myself included. And I think that just looking at the severity of some of the nominations here, we really need to change this category altogether. We've kind of stuck with it for too long. I think there needs to be a WTF moment for less serious things. And then there needs to be just the worst moment of the year for really horrible things, Supreme Court decisions, genocides, things like that. So going forward, I absolutely intend on reforming this category. But for the most part, the Gaza genocide is by far and away the most shocking WTF disturbing moment of the year. And to even call it, call it a moment is a bit of an understatement considering the fact that it's it's still happening. So yeah, it wasn't even close this time. You know, 80% on Twitter, 72% on YouTube and 70% on Patreon with the transphobic Bud Light meltdowns coming in second place. Now, when it comes to the next category, we have our shut the fuck up award. This is actually a new category and it's for people who don't necessarily rise to the level of scumbag, but they still kind of deserve their own little award in and of itself. So this includes Marjorie Taylor Greene, Matt Walsh, Moms for Liberty and Richie Torres. And you all decided that Marjorie Taylor Greene deserves our Shut the Fuck Up Award of 2023 with Matt Walsh coming in second place. And so those are all of the smaller categories, the TLDR categories, those are out of the way. But now we get to what you're all really here for. This is the Scumbag Award of 2023 and the MVP Award of 2023. I like to end on a positive note, so let's start off with the Scumbag Award. My nominations are Ron DeSantis, Elon Musk, Benjamin Netanyahu, and Joe Biden. 
Now, before we get to the results, I want to look at the precedent for this award. Last year's winner was the Supreme Court in the aftermath of them overturning Roe v. Wade, and the year before was Manchinema. And also, Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump are our only two-time winners. Now, on top of that, there were a lot of honorable mentions. That includes Mike Johnson, Donald Trump, and uh, you could make the case for any of these folks, right? But Mike Johnson just got into power. He's, he's going to have much more time to actually get a nomination next year. Donald Trump, well, he's out of power currently, so he hasn't been able to do as much damage, even though he still is very much doing damage. So it's, it's difficult, but I think that these are honorable mentions that should be mentioned. But regardless, let's go ahead and get to the results. The biggest scumbag of 2023, according to Humanist Report viewers, without question is Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli prime minister, with 84% on Twitter, 71% on YouTube, and 83% on Patreon, all agreeing unequivocally that this man is the biggest scumbag of 2023 and the runner-up was elon musk well let's get to some comments tim on patreon says bb is the obvious shoe in but honorable mention goes to desantis in my opinion for being so openly bigoted and enacting laws just to make people suffer adam on patreon writes all of them are fascists but one is directly responsible for a genocide period totally agree agent of chaos on patreon writes javier Millet, who recently won the argentine presidential election deserves a dishonorable mention absolutely Absolutely agree with that. JBD8 on YouTube says Netanyahu's the one who has proportionally caused the most death and suffering in the shortest amount of time, so my vote goes to him. Corin on YouTube writes, as a trans woman, it's extremely tempting to say DeSantis as he more directly impacts me, but my vote has to go towards Netanyahu because anyone directly responsible for a genocide has to earn the title. Yeah. Spongebrain on YouTube writes, I would have said DeSantis if Netanyahu wasn't straight up doing a genocide. And now it's the most important moment the MVP award. Now, fun fact about the MVP award. It has been named the Bernie Sanders award because he has won literally every single year since this award show began. And uh, that's not hyperbole. <laughs> so he actually, spoiler alert, does not win this year. So we've got a bit of a combo breaker and a new MVP. And there's a reason for that. It's because Bernie wasn't nominated, so he didn't have the chance to win. And I never foresaw a year when I wouldn't nominate Bernie Sanders for being MVP, but I just couldn't do it because he refuses to call for a ceasefire. Still, he is better on that issue than other senators, but the bar is so low. And when you can't do the bare minimum, I can't say you're MVP. You could do better. So hopefully he gets back on the nominations list next year, but he's going to have to work really hard to do that because... He fucked up. But having said that, though, we do have some new candidates. And my nominations include Zoe Zephyr, who is a trans lawmaker who spoke truth to power in her state and was punished for it. And there's also Michaela Kavanaugh in Nebraska, who led a months long filibuster to stop a ban on gender affirming care. And uh, guess what? Even though she wasn't successful in the end, she proved that you don't have to lay down and die if you're a Democrat. She set a blueprint as to how other Democrats should respond to this type of legislation. On top of that, we have Sean Fain, UAW president. I don't think I need to explain why he deserves this title, but he is absolutely one of the most important people in the country right now with regard to the labor movement. And my last nomination is Rashida Tlaib. She's a Palestinian American who decided to speak truth to power, and she was also punished for it. And what she's saying is incredibly important. Now, before we get to the results, there's some honorable mentions that I want to go over here. Uh, the other is kind of like a duo, Justin Jones and Justin Pearson of Tennessee, who were expelled and then subsequently reelected after the GOP in their state accused them of doing an insurrection because they decided to stand in solidarity with gun rights activists or gun control activists, rather. I think that they really showed, like Zoe Zephyr and Michaela Kavanaugh, that you can you can actually fight. You don't have to just lie down and get steamrolled just because you're in the minority. And I think that these are two leaders in this country that are going to do really big things. So they deserve an honorable mention. Other individuals that deserve honorable mentions, Tortugita. Stop Cop City activist, Rafat Alarir, a Palestinian poet beloved by a lot of people who was killed by the IDF. 
just horrible situation. So I, I think that these people deserve just their names to be brought up in any conversation about 2023 because they really did have a lasting impact. All of these people did. But with that being said, these are the results. The winner and the Humanist Reports MVP of 2023 is Rashida Talib with 67% on Twitter, 63% on YouTube, and 55% on Patreon, all agreeing she's this year's most valuable person. And the runner-up was Sean Fain with 33% on Twitter, 25% on YouTube, and 34% on Patreon. Now let's get to the comments. Forrest Miller on Twitter had a hard time choosing this year's MVP, but ultimately went with Rashida Tlaib. Yeah, this one was really tough. Alex Kawa on Twitter says, MVP is undoubtedly Sean Fain. He has shown the true potential of what the new labor movement can and will accomplish in the years to come, and so many union organizers will be inspired by him. Rashida Tlaib is a close second, given her being a lone reasonable voice on Israel-Palestine. Mike on Patreon writes, All are good, but I will say Rashida, since even with APAC and their goons barreling down on her, she is doing all she can to find a ceasefire and hold Israel accountable for their actions if only the other Dems had a spine instead of jelly to stand against this right-wing government. Scott on YouTube writes, I went with Fane as a UAW member. I know some people were disappointed with the contracts, but you're not going to make up 40 years of concessions in one contract, and it was a very good contract. Also, what Fane represents moving forward could become the largest labor movement in history, especially if he can pull off unionizing half of auto workers he is targeting. Zello on YouTube writes, Zoe Zephyr, I respect her so much being a trans woman myself. Joseph O on YouTube says, I went with Rashida Tlaib because of her standing up against the genocide of the Palestinian people and not backing down even though her colleagues voted to censure her. But I do want to add that Zoe Zephyr came in close second. I would love to see more of her and hope she can expand her political career on a national level like a House or Senate seat. That'd be amazing. So there you have it. Another year, another award show down. If you didn't get a chance to participate in this, comment down below. Let me know who's your MVP. Who is your scumbag? Uh, what you think I should do to make the categories more representative of the events throughout the year? Let me know, uh, especially your MVP and uh, scumbag, because I do think that there is an argument to be made. I personally support Rashida Tlaib, but I think there is definitely an argument to be made for Sean Fain or, or someone else, perhaps. So comment down below. And yeah, I hope you all enjoy the show.